I'm good. You're just back from Los Angeles. How are you feeling? I feel um, a little bit, you know, jet lagged, but you know. Tired. Did you have a good time? It was great. Yeah, it was a good. Uh, it's a good trip. What's the vibe out there? Feeling, feeling the royal blood, love. Yeah. Well, we just did like two weeks of. Um, it was almost like the greatest hits of America. Really went right. to like all our favourite cities, and it was mostly like those kind of radio shows. Um, it was great. Yeah, we love going out there. It's... What was your highlight of the trip? Probably LA actually, because we played um, the Forum, excuse me, where um, you know where the Foo Fighters did that big music video. And yeah. Like, basically, everyone's played there, which was great. Nice. We got to do that revolving stage thing. Oh, yes. Which was great, though it took ages to come round. Did that make, not make you feel dizzy at all? Or? No, just a bit self-conscious because we were like getting all this feedback at the beginning as the stage was revolving around, but it took about it takes about a minute to actually go around. Right. So like Ben was doing his thing and by the end he just had to do like this like drum solo. <laughs> so we'd never started a set with like, yeah, we'd never started a set with a drum okay, solo. Tap. Yeah. Okay, so three stats for you here. Fastest selling rock album in the last three years. I don't know if you're aware of that. Jimmy Page, I'm sure you're aware, was quoted after seeing you in New York as saying that you're taking rock to a new realm and you are supporting Foo Fighters next year <clears throat> along with Iggy Pop. Are you worried that None of that's true, by the are way. Are you worried things haven't started out that well for you? <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's, um, that's, you know, that's all madness, basically, those, those three points. If you had kind of, uh, if you had told me that two years ago, yeah. I wouldn't have believed you. Did you meet Jimmy? Yeah. How was that? Yeah, it's, um, it's weird meeting someone who, when you listen to, the, I, I pretty much listen to Led Zeppelin every single day. So um, meeting someone who effectively you don't actually know, but you feel like you do. You feel like you do. Yeah, you don't, you, I like know the music so well. Um, so it's quite nerve-wracking, really. Um, but he was like, you know, really nice, and we hung out for a bit, and it was all a bit weird for us. But yeah, end of the day, you know, he's just a regular guy that just happens to be godly at the guitar. You know? Absolutely, I think. Favorite Zeppelin track. When the levy breaks. Nice, nice. Uh, so I wanted to ask a little bit about the pedals that you use. Now, obviously, you know that you know there's some things you can't talk about, but boss pedal-wise, what are you rocking? What's on the board? So, I kind of fell in love with the uh, the harmonist pedal. The thing that really turned me on actually was the all the, all the kind of dive bomb settings it had, yeah. because I have loads of amps running at the same time. Yeah. I could, it kind of I worked out that I could start dive bombing one amp against another. Right. So then I ended up buying three. So I put three on the board. Nice. Which is kind of silly really. Never um, silly. Never but I don't I never every time I get a pedal I never end up really using it using it very uh, conventionally. I always end up I, I don't know, like my theory of pedals is like when you get it, find the most Do extreme, stupidest thing possible like and then and then just leave it on. <laughs> but um, yeah that seems to be like that thing is always is always under my foot, basically. I'm always. So you got that thing. Uh, next on the board, you got is it a graphic equalizer. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the um, again, like, don't really use it as a. I know a lot of people kind of use them as a boost or. Yeah. Or um, but like again, the first thing I did was turn everything down and just right. start pulling out one frequency at a time and like straight to the top and that was the kind of big part, I guess, of. Some of the guitar-y sounds was yeah. kind of wanted to sound like wanted the tones to sound like it had a cold or had like a flu, yeah. like everything to sound like it was coming out of someone's nose. <laughs> if that makes sense. That could be on your poster campaign. Yeah, like I'm it. not sure what the frequency is. Maybe it's it was somewhere it was somewhere like near the middle. You can twin up with lockets or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I was going for. Yeah. Also, you know, you're a two-piece and you're trying to get this big sound, so I guess it's important to you. That you know you can you know you've got your machines to, to make as much noise as possible, right? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, the um, I guess with like I'm not really contrary to proper belief. I don't really spend a lot of time like messing about with pedals. I just if I like it, and well, like I said before, most of the time it just stays on. I'm not really like into worrying about 
hitting pedals all the time. I mean, I do, to be fair, I do end up doing that quite a lot, but yeah. a lot less than... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um... Okay, so we've got them two down. What's, what's the other two talking? I have your boss, Chino, which nice. is... Been about that, the arguably the, uh, you know, the real, the real secret to the down. sound. <laughs> I mean, you know, a bass and tune is one everyone wants to hear, you know. This is it. Yeah, the line selector, yeah. That, you know what, actually, that, that line selector pedal was like... I got one when I was probably like 17, yeah. when I was playing, I was actually playing keyboard. Yeah. Uh, when I was, in a, I was in a rock band where we didn't have a bass player. Right. So, um, I used to run this keyboard through um, like a distortion, um, and then I'd run it into a, like a bass cab. And, sure play these kind of bass lines and then, yeah, it was the moment I, someone taught me about um, in the studio when, like, to get a really good bass distortion sound was to like, have two amps, basically. Yeah. So that was, to me, like the beginning of, of trying that out. Um, I remember, like, some Muse records, thinking, like, how, how can you get that, like, amazing mid kind of distortion sound, mm. but still have bottom end? Yeah. And um, turns out that's how you do it. You just you, you just it. split and have one screaming and one that's just sub and then put them together. So writing tracks, what, how does that work in terms of you guys, you two going into the studio? Do you ever do that from scratch and just say let's jam and see what comes of it, or is it more you come along with a riff? I guess when we when we write, like the record was really made in the room together. You know, yeah, it's all. Well and good, me having a, a riff or, yeah. or Ben having a a good groove or a good drum part, but unless they, unless the two things, unless my instrument, his instrument, kind of uh, connect and, yeah. and lock into something, then we kind of never feel like we have a a solid idea. Right. Um, like out of the blacks, a really good example because Ben had that drum hook first, actually. Yeah. And I was trying all these like riffs over it. I think I was actually playing Loose Change over that. Right. This track called Loose Change, I was playing a riff over that. And then eventually I was like, I'm gonna just play two notes now. <laughs> and um, I'm just, I basically just copied, I basically ran out of ideas. So I was like, I'll just copy, I'll just copy Ben. <laughs> <laughs> I love that amazing track came out of you running about out of ideas. Yeah. It's a long way that continued. <laughs> Did you ever consciously look at two-piece bands such as you know, DFA or Mel Banana or obvious, the obvious ones like White Stripes and go, yeah, well that, that's the way that I'm going to set? No, and, and I never really, um, I mean, I love those bands, and um, but I ended up being in a two-piece accidentally, really. Um, once I started playing bass um, for a bit, I was... I was in a few bands, but they, they weren't, you know, just me and my mates, basically. And there was a few, like, every week we'd go and meet up and, and jam together. And, um, but I remember this one, um, yeah, this one group I was in, the guitarist, you know, couldn't be there one day. Um, and I was already, like, messing about with the octaves and using loads of amps. And then I just added another amp to the, to the room, basically. I think we had, like, four or something. It was stupid. Right. Um, and that's when we were like, oh, let's just jam anyway, let's just, let's just whatever. And that was probably the moment where I kind of realised I had sort of stumbled across something that could, could definitely be on its own, maybe. Yeah. But I, di I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't really sold on the idea of making an entire band with just those ingredients. I was right. like, I mean, cause, especially because I play keys, and like, that's how I was, that's my first instrument, so I love harmonies and I love different parts and so I was kind of um, yeah it wasn't it wasn't a very attractive idea at the time to just have like one bass line drums and one vocal and I was like well I'm gonna miss all these other things but then um, but once you know once I had that sound in my pocket and decided to start a band with Ben again um, and we met up it was what he was doing was so great and what I was playing was sort of so stupidly loud <laughs> that it, the two, um, yeah, combined was like, well, I kind of feel like Ben's worth two people in the band. 
and then suddenly for the first time I guess I felt like I was worth like two people so it didn't feel like a two piece it felt like, right. it felt like yeah. the four of us. It certainly sounds like it's four of you. So if you were to able to go back to when this all started, when you first started out, what advice would you give your little younger self? How old? <laughs> Let's say 15, you could go back and have a chat with yourself, you give yourself any advice, would you, would you give yourself any tips about what you knew was coming up? It's hard really, I mean, I, we just like started bands and played music because that was kind of what we did, that's just what we did to have fun. Yeah. Um, we, we even used to like make EPs and recordings with bands that had never, we, that we never done a gig, we never, you know, we, we never sat down and in someone's kitchen and went, right, let's like make, let's try and make money. <laughs> it was, it was yeah. never like that, it was just like, well, it was just what we did. Some other kids went off and played football or squash, but... So it was almost a bonus that things started happening to you? Totally, yeah. I mean, I'm so lucky that I get to do this and nothing else. Um, but I mean, we, we were playing music when we had regular jobs and growing up like that, like, that's just what we did. We went to work and then in your spare time we did music. That's what we did to kind of was our leisure, so I don't know, yeah, I don't really know what advice I'd give, maybe plug in a few more amps, I don't know. A few more amps, <laughs> yeah. like it never hurt. Yeah. Well, listen. More is more. I, I, I totally agree. <laughs>